through the six companies that are using the Algorand at El Salvador with rap six Bitcoin. Banks. Yeah. Six banks, yeah. Um, that is huge. You know, yeah. That's who. Mm-hmm. That's who needs to be using other. You know, because she no, they can't use Shiba Inu. You know, <laughs> you know. And that's where well, I was saying, here it is, yeah. with, the, with the new suppression, obviously there, you know, that article says it, but when, when Bitcoin was, was, you know, considered legal tender in El Salvador, you know, no one was really talking about right after that, the agreement that Algorand made with Koi Banks to yep. build out the blockchain infrastructure and to use Algorand. So right now they're wrapping Bitcoin and doing the transactions though on Algorand. But you don't hear that in the mainstream. You just hear, you know, oh, El Salvador is using Bitcoin. Oh, the president keeps buying the dip. He's buying the dip. Yep. Like that's all you hear, but you don't hear how it's actually like what they're using it for. Um, and I think it definitely brings a lot of attention in that article to the, you know, to Silvio's trip down in South America and all the people, all the countries he talked to and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Check this out. I got another point too that I'm pulling up bullishness. I'm so bullish right now. I'm hyped. Hey, go if for you it. look at uh, Bitcoin again, right? I, and again, I'm always a Michael Saylor bull. I love his information. So y'all go look him up. But he breaks it down. He's talking about, if you think about what is one asset that everybody in the world can buy, whether in Nigeria, whether in London, whether in America or wherever else, they can buy Bitcoin. And then if you can put, put that on there, that Algorand is now being used with that, that, that is amazing. Not everybody can buy Apple stock and you know Nike stock because uh, it's not a New York stock exchange, but they're not in this country. So buying Bitcoin, and then powering it with Algorand, that is like a, you know, that's the best thing I can think of. That's smart. No, you make a great point that uh, Bitcoin is the most accessible crypto in the world. So that is that is part of the reason people are still attracted to it. You can't get Algorand as easily as you can get Bitcoin. It is, I mean, we have a little bit of a luxury being where we are in the world because we can access Algorand, but a lot of people use those ATMs to access their cryptocurrencies. And a lot of those ATMs only support, you know, Bitcoin, sometimes Litecoin. Um, actually, the one down the street from me just got Algorand in it. They have like 20 or 30 coins now, but I, I know that I know that's not the normal. Most of them are just Bitcoin ATMs. Yeah, the one at my house, by my house only has the three main Litecoin, Bitcoin, Ethereum. I yep. checked it out. But that, uh, yeah, that, that's how I'm seeing this. Like, yeah, the Lightning Network plugged in to the Algorand Network. Yeah. And going back to your first comment, you know, when we kind of talked about interoperability, and that's where I was kind of like, you know, it may still be always that Ethereum and Bitcoin or what it may not even be Ethereum. It could be Solana or Cardano or something else. I don't know. But what if one of these other hype projects just is the where people what people think they're using and they love using just because of, you know, whatever reason they can make money off of it, they're flipping, they're trading, whatever it is, or they're just using their everyday business and doing their, and transacting their money. But at the base of it, Algorand is the one facilitating and make sure all those transactions are secure. They're fast, they're done, they're and and everything is going through on it, but it's not it never really gets to that hype level. Cause that's what everybody's question. I mean, most of the people I get that I've that I've taught about, told people about Algorand is they're like, you know, when when is it gonna do what you know Ethereum did? And part of me thinks that it could for a long time just kind of be you know, silently building behind the scenes. And like, you know, obviously the people who are in the know, I would say that do their research and study Algorand will know what they're holding and know that it's worth something. But at, one day I do think the, 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 the switch will flip and, you, and owning Algorand will be like owning the top you know, stock right now. You could, you could you know, Amazon. Well, if, you, if, if you look at it, Ethereum has been out what, since 2013 or not 13, but 16. So they got more time, you know, yep. and they already split twice. Um, so Algorand, you know, coming in what, 2019, we, it's still a, a, a baby in the sense of how long it's been in the market. So that's why I'm so like, I think in 2030 is <laughs> bullish. You'll have people that want to stick with Ethereum 1 versus Ethereum 2 because be like, no, nah, we make more money on ETH 1. I don't want to go to ETH 2 and lose all that that's fee. True. I want to I want to make the gas fees. Yeah, I know, but what, they're going to proof of stake, so that shit's about to be. I mean, if. M- maybe. Proof, maybe. So I'll say if. Excuse me. Let me not speak too fast. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, didn't they say did they recently come out saying that it might not take like it might take another like five or six years yeah, to yeah, to actually yeah. make the transition? Yeah. It, it's kind Good of wild. Yeah, it's great for algorithm.